Coaching Soccer Weekly, episode 359, Scan, Choose, Do. Entertaining, educational, and inspiring soccer content to help make you a more effective coach, player, or soccer parent. Hello, and welcome back to Coaching Soccer Weekly, presented by World Class Coaching. My name is Sega Verbinovich, and this is the podcast devoted to bringing you cutting-edge methods, techniques, and tactics for coaching soccer. It doesn't matter if you're an experienced coach who has been training teams for many years or if you're new to coaching and working with the team for the very first time. There's something we can all do to take our coaching to the next level. Today's show is going to be a little bit different than the way that I usually do it. I'm going to start by talking about something, then I'll talk about the games this weekend, uh, and then we'll get into the scan choose do, which we did last week and that's about it i I think it's going to be a short podcast uh i'm going to record everything today monday and uh release it on thursday just because i'm off to chelsea on wednesday so yeah let's let's get into it i think it was friday i want to say when i got this announcement and if you've been following me and the show for a while you know that through the world cup and even before that i was a very big admirer of the way canada soccer conducted themselves and what they did for the program when it came to ontario soccer in the district level it's a different story but i've always really supported the direction of canada soccer and after what happened this past weekend uh, I think it started on Friday the feeling isn't it's not anger you know it's not frustration it's worse than that it's embarrassment it's embarrassment to be a part of this program so essentially what happened was the Canadian women's national team uh, put out a post on their Instagram so every single player on their individual Instagram account put out a statement that I'm I'm guessing they came up with together essentially talking about how Canada soccer has cut funding from the women's program and you know the first thing that came to my mind was shock like how can you how can you do that now Canada is a very different country when it comes to soccer when we look at our soccer history, there is no men's program. There is no, I mean, yes, you know, we had a men's program. They played in CONCACAF and played against teams, but there was never success there. And even now, the greatest success that they've had, and I don't want to, you know, undermine or, or say it wasn't a big achievement because it was, but they made the World Cup and that was it. They didn't win a game. You know, and, and I've mentioned before that I'm proud of that. Uh, I'm, I'm proud of where they came, but the women's program is so far and beyond the men's program and what they've accomplished. They won the Olympics. They won the last Olympics. Like, it, you know, for Canada soccer to cut the funding of the program that brought them to where they are today and their success is an embarrassment. I believe in loyalty. That's how I've run my program, uh, my academy. That's one of the really big foundations of what I wanted to do. I don't increase payments for players that are in the program. Once you're in the program, you will pay a consistent amount. Once you leave and come back, that's a different story. But everyone who's loyal to us, we treat well because that's what you should do as a business. You know, there's the whole uh, Netflix Net, Netflix thing that's happening now with the subscription. And it, if you don't understand that your customers need a sense of loyalty, then you don't understand business. And what they did, Canada Soccer, to take out the funding of the most crucial program that has elevated Canada Soccer to where it is today... Uh, it, it, I just I, I have no words for how embarrassing it is to be a part of that because I am a part of that I'm like, like I am under Canada soccer 
we are sanctioned under Canada soccer. So whether I like it or not, we are part of this program and I don't like it. So it's embarrassing to be associated with that. How can you cut the funding of the national program and not and cut training windows and, and games and and here's the other thing about Canada. I've lived in two other countries for an extended period of time uh, throughout my life. And what I love about Canada and what I loved about the women's team as well was there's such a culture of multiculturalism within Canada. And I don't want to say, you know, um, that there's no racism or anything like that. But from everywhere that I've been, from what I've seen, this place is the best that there is very welcoming people are very kind to people of all genders and races and it's just a a nice place to live there's kindness everywhere and inclusivity everywhere and Canada soccer represented that for a very long time because of the success of the women's team we were not the first but we were an early adopter of you know women's soccer we put in women's soccer and we played on the biggest stage in the world and I was proud of that when I lived in the US and I lived in Chicago that was the Mia Hamm era and Mia Hamm was my favorite soccer player you know these early adopters of women's soccer played a huge part in me growing up so to get a message like that that they're cutting the funding that's frustrating that's embarrassing uh and that's where i'm coming from now i said this from the very very beginning of doing this show if i'm going to complain about something that's not good enough i need to provide a solution so i'm going to do my best this is how i think if by any way i ended up becoming soccer Canada president the president of soccer and the Canadian Soccer Association here's what I would do and I would do this every single year and I'll tell you why I think after I tell you what it is that this would be a huge success every year I would say you know we will the Canadian uh, national teams men and women will play X amount of games and within those games a certain percentage of the profits from each friendly would go to the women's and the men's team. And they would be equal. So let's say, you know, 10% of the profits would go to the women's team for any women's game. 10% would go to the men's uh, for any game. And on top of that, I think what I would do, and just from kind of that loyalty perspective, is within that I would do kind of like a hierarchy right so if you're going to a friendly and you have the most caps on the team I think you should get paid the most you know it's a friendly you're making an effort to be a part of the team so I think you should be getting the most just like a 17 year old who's making their first you know cap shouldn't be getting the same amount I think as someone who's played you know their 200th game for the national team so I, I would do it that way you know there would be a percentage that would go to the team trainers and, and all that now here's why I think that's really effective I personally believe in giving the power to the people and what you're doing with that is you're giving the power to the players a lot more power you're telling them essentially listen you're going to earn more money by selling out seats so based on your performance, based on what you can do, maybe from a social media point of view, maybe going into the community and really getting more players, uh, youth players, I mean, and parents to be excited about the program, the national team going to games, that's going to benefit you. Right now, I don't 
think there's a ben like I don't think this exists. I, I I'm not 100 percent sure, but this is what I would do, and it'll be really effective, I think, in the women's game because I, I don't know any other players personally. I, I really don't, but from interviews and watching them play when you give them power to do something they have never ever just sat and done nothing with it they've overcome they have just done such an amazing job of taking that power and doing something really good with it so i think that if we gave the power to the players I really believe that they would start going into communities, youth clubs, getting really involved in that part of the game just to, you know, show the kids, you know, come watch me play. You know, I'm playing this weekend, you know, I think that could be really cool. And, and what a way that would be to give back to the players, which in turn would give back to the soccer community. And I think everyone's a winner there. But to just... <sighs> Like, I feel so bad for them. It's a World Cup year, right? You're excited. Can you imagine? You're going into a World Cup year. You're playing for a top club, a top European club, who, you know, we've seen the past five years, European women's soccer has just taken a different level. And now you're excited because you're playing quality soccer. You're getting quality training. You're getting a quality paycheck right for some of them still not where i think it should be and then you're you're excited to go to this training camp and suddenly you can't go because there's no funding for it and you're just what do you what do you do you, you it's a world cup year it's not you know like it it's just ridiculous but yeah so those are my thoughts um, support your national team I'll, I'll say that support the players support the coaches support the staff uh, that's important to me um, I don't really care about the political powers they're not they're not the stars here they're not the ones who are at ground zero they're not the ones who are on the field battling they're not I don't know um, very frustrated. I know I said frustrated wasn't what I experienced. I guess I was wrong. I, I am frustrated, but I'm really embarrassed about it too. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of my take on it. So let's talk about the weekend. This weekend is brought to you by VO. <laughs> I always wanted to say it like that. Um, today I have my VO meeting with the players. I'm really excited to go over what happened this weekend. There was a lot that went down. So I'm really excited to talk about it and go over it. It was a really great platform. You come in. I do it usually 10 minutes before I go set up my tripod, turn on the camera. That's why when I uh, upload it to video, you'll always see the game before I start because I just start it five minutes before. Then I don't have to worry about it um, in the app. It automatically starts at the game at your game. It doesn't go to the previous game, which is cool, I think. So, uh, yeah, VO, amazing video tool, great analytical tool as well. I use it to help my players see what they did wrong and what they could improve on during the weekend. So Saturday came around, and the team that we played that was the dirty team is what we're going to call them. <laughs> I have nicknames for team. If you were If you were one of the first listeners when I uh, had, I think, my first outdoor season, with my 2012s, I had the hockey team. So uh, I'm going to start talking about these guys as the dirty team because they played just so dirty. They were there the game before us, and they they were even worse. Like, they, it, it wasn't soccer. And uh, I'm the worst. I, I can't keep my mouth shut. I don't know. It's an issue. When I see a problem in soccer, I just... Uh, so I got into it with the coach. Um, it's just not how you play soccer. It's not. At youth soccer, you don't choke kids. You don't tackle them down. You don't go for their legs. Like, it's not soccer. So we got into it a little bit. We're playing them 
in a couple of weeks. So here's what I did. Called the district, let them know what's going to happen. And here's what's going to happen. And I told this to the district manager. Uh, I, I said simply this. Okay. Uh, and, and this is what I would urge you to do. You know, if there's a team that you see that it's just, it, it's not youth soccer. Listen, U13, different story. Okay. I, I, I get it that there's, there are standings and all that. I don't care about those things. Uh, we'll lose all forfeit games because we may not have enough players or I think players, I don't care about standings and stuff like that, even at U13 and up. But especially at the youth ages, to care so much about winning uh, that it's not even soccer anymore, you know, the district needs to get involved at that point. So called the district, and here's what I let them know. I, I said this, essentially. If we play them in a couple of weeks, which we will, and they play dirty, and this is the important point here, and this is what I had a huge issue with. If the ref does not give yellow and red cards for these infractions, I will blow my whistle and my team will get off the field and we will not continue to play. As a coach, when I'm running my training sessions, when I'm playing games, it doesn't matter. Your first job as a coach always, I don't care where you are, is the safety of the players. That is your first, every coaching course, that's the first thing they teach you, okay? When you are starting out, you got to walk around the field. You got to make sure there is no hazardous material. You're supposed to do that. The ref is supposed to do that. The ref is the crucial part in the game situation that keeps the game fair and keeps my player safe. And if the ref can't do it, the ref that I sp spoke to told me that he's not allowed to give cards to nine and 10 year olds, which makes absolutely no sense to me. Uh, it's soccer. You have cards. You have them for a reason. You have them to use. Use them, <laughs> you know, if you need to, right? Uh, I I'm not telling the ref to use it every game, but there are certain situations, like the game that I saw before our game, there should have been cards. There should have been, a, there should have been two red cards from what I saw, um, but no. And the game got out of hand. If you're going to allow players to play like that without any... repercussions and you can talk about a free kick but with free kicks being two touch very rarely are there goals from free kicks in 12 and under like it just doesn't happen so it's not a real it's not a real punishment for the player right so you need to use cards you need to in certain situations and if he's not going to we're not going to play we're just not – I'm not going to put – they injured two of our players. Like, uh, I'm not going to do that um, for one game. <laughs> anyway, uh, so, so so, so, we got into it and, and all that. Uh, no physical stuff ever, ever. Um, I know the limits, and, and I know how to gauge them. So it was a lot of, uh, you know, talking, and, and I think that's okay. Uh raising of the voice <laughs> uh which again you know I, I guess i'm a little too passionate about it but i just i couldn't help myself so anyway uh that happened and then we played so the team that we played this weekend they're big strong uh in all 2012s we had a combination of 2012 2013s and mostly 2013s this week <laughs> Uh, uh, we had a lot of sick players uh, from 2013 and 2014, which I'll also talk about. But we played well. For the first time in forever, I, I think this is a brand new milestone. In every age group, sorry, not every age group, but in the two age groups that played on Saturday, we built from the back and scored a goal. We've never done that. We've built from the back, gotten a shot off, you know, and we've, we've done that a lot. But it has never been from the goalkeeper and scored, and we did. Uh, it was one of the nicest goals. We did that with our 2012-13s and then with our 2010s as well, which I'll talk about. Uh, but what a game. Uh, I mean, we lost, 
but we were just we were trying to build out of the back and for it to work i think that's a new milestone for us and i think it's really because of the training that we've been doing indoors so uh yeah that was that was the first game second game wasn't really a game we played uh, the last place team it, it's so weird how w- with this league there are teams that are really really weak and then there are teams that are just really really strong there's no real balance and it's because there's just one league so we ended up winning 10-2 um, but we played really well we kept possession really well we moved the ball and again built from the back and scored some really nice goals um, which was great 2014 was the next day and we had uh, let me see one two three four four of our 2014s were sick and these are all our starters so it was essentially our 2015 team with a couple of our 2014s and no goalkeeper (laughs) so uh again I, i i thought we did okay you know we fought really hard and we really moved the ball from side to side, which was really nice to see with the players that we had on. And and it was a 2015 team. There was a goal that was disallowed for us, uh, and it should have been disallowed. Um, one of my <laughs> our 2015s uh, from a free kick just took off, dribbled through the whole team and scored a goal. It, it was one of the nicest things I've seen from this team like just and and these guys are bigger stronger because we moved up a division so he just absolutely destroyed them and then uh the ref you know called it off which is fair you know i i wanted a redo of a free kick but he just kind of gave him a go which is fine you know i I didn't care at that point um but it was really nice uh it was really great so you know it, it was a good weekend overall i think um but we're really moving in the right direction and it's really nice to see that so yeah uh that was this weekend now let's go back and talk about this week's training um everything is still the same now we've been able to integrate the attack versus defense game which i spoke about last week if you're new and this is your first episode please go back and listen to that because that's what i'll be talking about today um but we're consistently getting better at it uh, as coaches, we're getting better at training it, and then we're also getting better from a player point of view. The players are starting to get it better, and I think that's why we've been able to successfully build out of the back with all of our teams. Our 2014s have already done it. Um, they're just at a very different level than the other teams, but now we're starting to see it with our 2013s, our 2012s, our 2011s, and our 2010s, who all play... Uh, in some sort of togetherness or, uh, you know, within their age groups in uh, up a year. So 2013s only play up a year, 2012s play their age and up a year, or 2011s play their age and up a year, and our 2010s play their age. So uh, it, it's just kind of the way that I, I did it this year with the way that the league structured their games <laughs> um, So and, and their divisions. So that's just kind of what came out of it but within that attack versus defense game we were doing a great uh but we added something that i caught on from tovo you can search up tovo they're they're really great uh i followed todd for a very long time uh, and i'm also thinking about taking their course uh, which is online there's a lot of online courses by the way uh there's one from manchester city as well i don't know if that's any good but there are just there are so many online courses now with the way that there's so much from an AI which I'm also going to talk about a little bit later and marketing and video content like there's so much to learn that we just haven't had access to before people with a lot of expertise are finally able to put out their knowledge to everyone around the world and and it's so easy to access you just have to pay for a course and it's up to you to kind of <clears throat> figure out you know what is it that you need you know so just to go buy a Manchester City course doesn't make sense right you, you, you need a reason behind it 
what I love about Tovo and the way that they play is they're very uh, Cruyff influenced. The owner uh, Todd Bean, uh, he's the uh, son-in-law of of Johan Cruyff, so he really worked with him a lot and. A lot of what he talks about is what Cruyff talks about, and he's an American, so uh, Cruyff, I mean, New English, but it, it, it's nice to kind of hear him. And, and there's there's on YouTube stuff that you know he he does a seminar and, and things like that. But he spoke about scan, choose, do, which is really what the players should be doing before they get the ball, and we implemented that in our training session this week when we did the attack versus defense game that's what i was telling the kids every single second scan choose do so just like with everything else i take the coaching points of or any information from the person that i got it from and then i add my own spin on it so i'll talk about kind of the way that he presented it and then the way that i do it because it's a little bit different. Um, there's a lot of the same stuff, but uh, let's start with the way that he spoke about it. And the lecture that he did is on YouTube. Uh, I listened to it. No, it's not a week ago. So anyway, let's start. So the first thing that you should be doing when you don't have the ball is scanning, right? So he defines scanning as head up, hips open, and receiving with the furthest foot, which we talk about in our rondo so our players are used to that anyway but i wanted to get it deeper into that so here's what i added for my players so when he says head up what i tell my players is shoulder to shoulder we want our head moving from one shoulder to the other shoulder and that's really the scanning motion okay we want them to look from one side to the other now opening the hips to a eight-year-old doesn't mean anything so what we spoke about was to have one shoulder pointed to one corner flag and the other shoulder to the opposite corner flag okay and that's going to open your hips essentially at least it did in my head <laughs> and uh it, it, it did in the training so that's that's what i that's how we did it and then for this foot is for this foot so that's how we start with scanning now the visual cues sorry the yeah th that's the uh choose part of it essentially I, I went in and i asked the players after i did the scanning right so we did scanning then i let them play uh scan 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 is all you heard from me for you know that five ten minutes and then i stopped i didn't stop it there's a natural stoppage in the game which is why i loved it so much i said what are you scanning for and then one of the players goes, space. And I said, okay, what is space? Now, here is how they define it. Ball, opponent, teammate. Okay? That's, that's what I, I loved. Absolutely loved that. And that's what we stuck to for choosing. So I said, okay, what is space? Okay? And that, then one of the players said, you know, uh, a place where no one is. And I said, okay, who is no one? And then he said, the opponent. I said, yes. Okay, then someone else said, who else? Teammate, yes. And the last one is the hardest one that um, someone got in one of our sessions, uh, but it's the ball. So space is where your teammates, the opponent, and the ball is not. And that is what you are scanning for and constantly trying to get. So then we played, we did that. And then after that, I would come in and then I would coach the defense, right? The forwards that are attacking are, sorry, that are defending now, that are pressing the ball. And once I saw that the players were able to get into space, then I spoke about the players pressing and I said, okay, so now we know one team is trying to create space. And then I said, what are you guys trying to do? And you guys being the team that's pressing. And then, you know, one of them said, uh, we're trying to prevent the players from scoring two goals. And I said, okay, how do you do that? And then we're looking for the answer to be to pick up a player. OK, 
Okay, if you do not have the ball, you should be picking up a player when you're pressing. You should be cutting passing lanes. You should be picking up a player because we're pressing with forwards. We're not pressing with our midfield. We're just pressing with our forwards. And we had three forwards. So essentially, we're getting ready for uh, 11 v 11, which is when we would have three forwards. And that's how we're going to play. We're going to play, I think, a 3-4-3 in the summer or a 4-3-3. But either way, I want my forwards pressing. My midfielder's job is going to be to get small and shift from side to side. Okay, so they're going to be our safeties, essentially, if we're thinking about it from an American football point of view. But our forwards, they're going to be pressing. So their job is to find a player, pick them up, and press. Cut passing lanes. Pick a player, okay, pick them up. Once you've picked them up, you look for the ball, and then you go find and cut the passing lane and continue to press and press and press and press. So that was the constant battle, right? Finding space versus a uh, player picking you up. And that's what we worked on. Now, obviously, this is going to get better and better and better, but we've already started to see in the games that scanning is such a game changer. If you can teach a nine-year-old to scan, and we did that successfully, it's a completely different game at that point when they're able to find space and look for space. Now, do. Okay, that's the last part. Do, for me, uh, and I don't want to uh, paraphrase Todd because I, I don't really remember what he said, but when you receive that ball, you need to make a decision before that. So when you receive it, the decision's already made. You just got to execute it. Okay, so I'm scanning, okay, for space. Okay, I found space, so now I'm going to choose what my decision is. And when that ball comes, I'm just going to execute. I'm not going to second guess myself, none of that. So if I see a player in space and I want to pass him the ball, as soon as it comes to me, pass. If I see space in front of me, I attack, right? I go 1v1. Whatever that is, whatever that player sees, doesn't matter to me. But the do part is go for it. And when you go for it, go 100%, okay? So that was essentially this week's training. And I thought it went really well. And they're starting to see progress in the games as well, as evident by the way that we played. The last thing that I wanted to talk about today, and I guess we're at, we're at 32 minutes now, so maybe it will be a little bit long today. Um, but AI, uh, artificial intelligence. Now, stay with me here. Stay with me here. Okay. <laughs> AI is going to be a game changer. And, I'm, and, I, and I want to take this from the point of view of an academy owner. From a marketing point of view, if you are not using AI, then you're going to be falling behind very quickly. And with the new Google and Microsoft kind of AI wars is, I guess, what the marketers are calling it these days there's really going to be a shift in the way that we are going to be searching for information and consuming information. I think from listening to a lot of different podcasts about these new marketing trends and, and what they're thinking based off the announcements that have been made from Microsoft and Google, it's going to be a lot more interactive. It's going to be a lot more of a dialogue type of search engine, um, you know, that you can ask questions and, um, and really have a conversation with the, you know, the bat, I don't know what you would call it, but with, with you, you'd be talking to the search engine, they would talk back and they would try and really get to know you, what you're looking for. And, and that has a huge implication on, I think, the youth soccer market. Right now, if I'm being honest with you, what I'm seeing from even a basic Google ads and, and all that marketing point of view is that it's virtually non-existent at least where I am uh, it's just not used a lot and with this shift there's going to be even more changes and I think just being aware of it which is what I'm what the point of this uh, is a good start because there are going to be changes within the next 12 months uh, and things are going to just look very different in five years from now, the way that we search. I'm not saying Google is going to go away or anything like that, but it, it, it's 
the rise of a new platform. And whenever that is, and you're first to know about it, there's a lot of benefits to it. I was, this is, uh, I think during COVID, um, like the very beginning of COVID, I was at Havergal, which is the all girls school. And that's when I first learned about TikTok while we were, we, they, all the girls were in their different cohorts, I think is, is what they called it. Uh, their classes, they couldn't mix or anything like that. And I was brought in to run their soccer program during the day. And while I was doing that, they were like, oh, you know, coach, could we do like a TikTok? While, and I was like, what is a TikTok? And, you know, fast forward 2023, gigantic new, well, not new anymore, but gigantic, gigantic application. And this is what's going to happen with AI. And those that are going to be able to utilize it in the right way, which I don't know, I'm no expert, you know, I, I want to make it clear, but I want you to be aware of it. You know, um, that's really the point of this podcast. My job and my role here is to make you aware of new trends uh, that are going to affect you as a soccer coach. And this is going to affect you. It will, um, whether you like it or not. AI is going to be something and we're already seeing it, right? Uh, VO uses AI tools to analyze the games. There are so many different uh, trackers that use AI now to personalize and it, it's just it's it's already existing but now it's going to take a different level in a new approach that I think is going to have a huge impact on my the way that I run my business so uh, yeah AI uh, marketing <laughs> um, yeah uh, th that's it for for that <laughs> Hopefully that was helpful. I don't know. Uh, but just like what I do with, you know, I found, for example, Tovo and did a whole bunch of, this was years ago, to figure out who they are. It, it's up to you now to start to research this kind of stuff. Um, and I will start and have been listening to podcasts and things like that, that talk about these things. And I think it's important to do so, you know. And then you can make a, a, a proper educated decision. And, and that's what everything should be, right? Like I can come here and I can talk and it's great. And I can give you advice and, and all this, but my advice may not work for you. You may not agree with what I'm saying and that's okay, <laughs> you know? Uh, but you need to be in a position where you have the knowledge to make those decisions. So hopefully you can figure out some ways to see if this is something you can integrate with your academy or with your team or you know um, I'm sure there are going to be new tools for scheduling training all those softwares you know like team snap there's going to be different AI ways and and just it, it's going to take a whole new approach to I think youth soccer in general so as I mentioned last week on Wednesday this week, so by the time you listen to this, I'll already be gone. Um, I'm going to Chelsea. I'm really excited I got the itinerary. Uh, it looks really good. I'm going to be able to watch a lot of training sessions all the way from the U8 all the way to the U18s. I'm also going to be going to the Chelsea-Southampton game, which I'm really excited about. I've never been to a Premier League game before. So that's going to be really exciting. I'm really excited to just go and, you know, be with people who are like-minded you know in my life there aren't people like that uh and I, I actually spoke to the about this with another academy owner you know uh, it's not lonely don't get me wrong but there aren't that many people in my life that can talk soccer at i don't want to say a higher level but at the same level that you know other coaches talk it doesn't even have to be an expert but you know m most of my friends who follow soccer they're casual observers you know they're they have a team and, and they follow the team but when it comes to tactics youth training it's just not the same language right it, they don't watch the game like i do they watch the ball i watch the formations that you know it, it's different so i'm excited to just be around people who share my passion for 
this kind of stuff. And that's really it. I'm not going to be able to sightsee or anything like that. And I really honestly don't care about that. Um, I'm just excited to meet people, um, watch these presentations, watch these training sessions and just learn, you know, just for once not talk as much, <laughs> you know, and just listen, learn, observe and just have a really good time. Uh, so I don't know what I'm allowed to post, what I'm not allowed to post. I just don't. Um, I know I'm not allowed to post a lot, so I won't. But I'll do the best that I can. It'll be on my Instagram account, which is... Let me get it. I don't even know. That's probably bad from a marketing point of view. Uh, Gladiator Soccer Academy, all one word. If you want to follow me for this weekend, uh, you can. And then unfollow me. I don't... It's not a big deal. Um, also, I just post some cool stuff on there. Uh, I'll post, uh, what do I post here? Highlights of the weekends. Um, yeah. And uh, I also post the episodes, the name of the episode. So when it comes out, usually. I'm pretty good at that. Not great, but pretty good at it. So uh, Gladiator Soccer Academy. Um, also, uh, sorry. Uh, let's find this here. The Coaching Soccer Weekly uh, Facebook group, which I'm really proud of. You know, I'm proud of it. it it's it's done really well. I I didn't have any expectations. We're at 198 right now. We just need two people to get to 200. That's awesome. You know, and and there are some really great conversations going on in there. You, you don't have to say anything. You can just read. You can, you know, comment whatever you want. It, it's just a really great way for you to get any questions you have answered not for me necessarily because i try only if there is something addressed to me or something like that i'll comment i'll try not to and if i see something that i like then i'll put it on the show and talk about it so uh yeah but most of the time it's just people having great soccer conversations youth soccer conversations which uh i don't know that exists anywhere so uh yeah um and also, if you do like the podcast, please give it a five-star review. I haven't asked. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why. It's just not, you know, for me, I, I'm on here not for the fame or anything like that. It's just, you know, this is something that I needed when I was starting out. It was just someone that I could listen to, that I could, you know, they would say something, which was Tom back in the day, and I would stop and kind of analyze and, and think about it and change it and this and that. It, it's just good to hear that. So, you know, if you are gotten any use from the podcast, uh, please give it a five-star review or even better, just tell someone else, tell a different coach and have them subscribe and, and that's all, you know, not, not a big deal. Um, yeah, but that's it for today. Uh, let's close it out. And I will see you next week. Thanks for listening to another episode of Coaching Soccer Weekly. We had a really good week from training to our games. It was just a really positive week. We lost most of our games, but that's not important. I'm really starting to see a lot of improvement within our players. And the fact that we have so many players playing up, I think is also uh, really, really good for their development because they're playing up and they're also playing their age. So. There's a lot of really good things happening within the academy. This weekend, as I mentioned, I'm going to be going to Chelsea, and I'm really excited for that trip. I haven't really taken a soccer trip before, so this is going to be the first time that I do that. And I'm really excited to, like I mentioned, meet people and just watch Chelsea do their thing. <laughs> um, I have some other things in the pipeline as well that I'm going to try and experience while I'm there for, but uh, hopefully I'll be able to talk about that within the next couple of months. But until next week, enjoy the journey, enjoy the moments, but most, most importantly. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end. And you can check out more of our videos right here. And if you haven't done so already, I would really appreciate it if you'd hit the like button and the subscribe button.